action. How many children does Cam Newton have? Like eight or something like that? He got eight children, three different baby mamas. This is from his own admission. Eight children, three different baby mamas. Right. And what's the issue? Okay, so I only seen this in clips, and this is from his podcast, but he had a, I believe she's a therapist. I don't know her name. I'm going to be totally honest. And she but was fine, too, was she? She was fine. Had a little diamond chain on. I ain't seen no diamond chain. I saw cleavage. <laughs> what you talking about? Why you playing? You, okay, I understand. You know, I like the little subtle things on a woman. You know, fingernails, toenails. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'll i get to the uh, Big obvious Big plastic hooters ain't subtle, brother. I'll get to the uh, obvious <laughs> part soon. But basically, he was basically, you know, he's in front of a therapist. He's being candid with his life. And he's saying that, you know, he wants more children. He's in front of a therapist in front of a camera. Yes. He's in front of a therapist. So this is COE, right? Content over everything. Content over everything. All right. But he's being vulnerable. He's being real by saying he knows that he's looked at a certain way. He's been, he has been <laughs> argued as causing issues because he and Nick Cannon for not having wives. They're just having children. So the therapist says you are creating, you are knowingly creating broken families by doing this. So let's just like numbers matter. Over 70 percent of all divorces are initiated by women. Correct. So who's creating broken families? I'm making babies. You creating broken families. The moment I have a child with you, the moment I have a child with you, I can pay you child support and that's going to be negotiated. But if I marry you. Somehow you be entitled to 50% of all of my empire. And she didn't run a single down. She ain't throw a single touchdown. I mean, we picked the wrong mates, though. We've talked about that. I think, yes, 70% of these divorces are initiated by women. But we don't even have a lot of information on how those marriages even started. For, for your moral argument, I hear you, okay? Right. But everything that they say and everything they do is not def did not defend it by morality, it's defended by legality. Right. All right. And so if we're going to say it's her body, her choice, it's my money, my choice. Okay. Like if we're going to be fair, then we have to be fair. You can't police my body and then tell me I can't police yours. That's insane. Hi, I'm a man. I'll make babies. If you want to be in my life, you better behave. You better be in your best behavior or you're not going to be in my life. All I, right. I, I think, I think the, the base of the argument though is, you're not putting kids in a structured environment. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Did Genghis Khan put children in a structured environment? Did any conqueror in the history of the world put children in a structured environment? Like, if you just want to talk historically about the human person, we conquer, we dominate, we make babies, and hey, you better, if you survive, you... <laughs> what did it say in uh in Rocky? If he if he dies, he dies. This is the reality of humanity. I, I tell you what though, I think this. I think the difference is Cam got money. Here's the other part of this. These women are not refusing a man with money. If they had such an issue, they would be refusing it. Hi. They're not refusing men with no money. That's true. They're not refusing men with no money. But at the same time, it's like we're critiquing him and Nick Cannon. So this is me playing a little devil's, devil's advocate to my own, you know, argument is, hey, they have money. They can facilitate these children to to a degree to where they can survive. Y'all having kids with broke motherfuckers and can't do shit. Hey, if you if you want to play, you can play with yourself. That's called masturbation. But in reality, we all know that the game of life is men are trying to get some booty and women are trying to secure a man and have a family. Now, if we're both negotiating and your bargaining chip is your body, then baby, you better make sure you get every dollar you can. Back in like 1988 through 1995, women got a Maytag. You know what a Maytag is? You don't even know what a Maytag is. That's a washer and a dryer. Probably got a Kenmore. That's a refrigerator. And they had a station wagon. You know what they had to do? Keep their mouth closed, make some food, and be grateful. They're not going to like this, but I'm going to put this back off on women because women hate this. But you know what? I've never been asked by a woman when I've engaged in intimate actions. I've never been asked by her for, for two things. <laughs> for for no, no type of protection or any type of paperwork ever. I'm always the person that have have I've initiated that conversation every time. So my thing is this. If we're going to say that he's creating a broken family, if he's creating broken families, why are, why are women not saying in their community, why are you not requiring marriage? Why are you not requiring protection? You will definitely fight for the abortion and you will definitely fight for the plan B. But why are you not talking, hey, you must be protected or you because must you marry can, me? You can never criticize a woman ever in public for any reason. You can't say put some clothes on because now you're woman shaming. You think it's my fault that this happened? I'm... 
Yes, I think you're complicit in bad things that happen to you. I think I'm complicit in bad things that happen to me. If I decide to go out and be out at two o'clock in the morning and someone robs me, guess what? I probably shouldn't have been out at two o'clock in the morning. I understand this. But you look at these scenarios and these scenarios, they just only want to blame the big, strong black guy. How many children does Elon Musk have? I don't know. I think he has quite a bit too. No, he got some I think he got about 10 children. <laughs> All right? Like, you add gender and race, and these are the intersections and we have the, when we have these conversations. But I'm just saying, hey, Cam Newton, whatever the trauma is, women create trauma all the time, especially in this modern society, by asking me to understand her feelings and not caring about mine at all. I got one for you. What's up? Can black men exercise masculinity like everyone else? Like uh, other groups of people, can he? Because you just said something that's true. If I'm not mistaken, didn't Elon have like a kid with somebody he worked with or somebody who was working in his company? Something if that was like at him? Okay, so it seems to me these guys, and they're uberly, uberly wealthy, they don't fall under the same critique as black men. Nick Cannon does. Nick Cannon is uberly rich. He ain't no billionaire, but, man, but he's all critiqued. those shows he got, they. Why are you getting mad at me when women like me? They're standing in line to do this thing, okay? There is a line of women. I brought a young woman over here, and she was like 19 or 20 years old, and she walked into this apartment. This apartment that you're sitting in right now, she looked at my studio, and she said, this is nice. Waiting for an <laughs> opportunity to come into the studio so, so she I could blow that back out. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at this fast day and dynamic because there are so many people who don't have anything. You have an iPhone and a fat booty, and you can just kind of like hop along in life until you're about 27 years old. That's the reality for a lot of beautiful women in America. And so when that's your reality, how do you get mad at a man for working hard, creating a a, a, a whole entire industry for his family because he has the little podcast, not the little podcast, Cam Newton has a very successful podcast, and he has other in, uh, endeavors also. So when this is happening, you blame this guy because women like him. They want to make babies. He said he's planning on having more babies. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Not from a legality standpoint, not from a morality standpoint. He is a conquerer, man. He is one of uh, the conquistadors, not conquistador. Those guys, a gladiator. There you go. A modern gladiator. The one thing, though, that nobody wants to settle on is a solution for this issue that women really have more of a problem with. And again, I posted this on TikTok. I posted this on shorts. And in the comments, you're going to see the same thing. As soon as I talk about abstinence in marriage, everyone says that's not the women and men alike will say that's not the answer. Oh, that's not the answer. Oh, abstaining is not the answer. But it's like we both are having an issue with, OK, either you are keeping this child and putting me on child support and it's too much for me. I can't live or survive. Or you're complaining because you don't get to be under the same roof with this man and have this child. So what? why can't you see the force I, for the trees? The more important question for me is why do you care about a woman's problem? You're, argue, man? you're arguing on behalf of women. I'm not no white knight, bro. I'm not, hey, Chivalry is dead and baby, you killed it. <laughs> you asking me why... If you want to bang and you have the baby and I say, listen to me, and you say no, and you leave, you left. Misguided women ruin society. I feel like if they not checked, if nobody's putting information on their brain, we're going to constantly be where we are right now. And who am I to guide them? I think it's I think it's definitely our responsibility as men to, to put some information out that's going to guide them or control them. They are 53% of the voting block. Because, correct. All right? And so. <laughs> correct. The moment they, they get out there and they go vote for Kamala, they're going to make sure they continue to get their welfare and they WIC and they got doggone child support. And they're going to continue to get ch uh, child care vouchers. And they're going to say, I ain't doing nothing while the government is funding you. Like, that's insane. I believe it's Candace Owens who questions the right of women voting. And I'm not, I I mean, I'm not going to question a person's right to vote. I'm only going to talk about power. If I look at the system and I see the system doesn't serve me, I'm not going to say I should play the game more better. I'm strong as shit. I'll break the fucking system. Excuse my language, but you have to understand. That's time for American men to get powerful. They didn't create America by writing on paper. No, they went and got some muskets. And they took some bodies. They took some scalps and they created America. Like we sitting over here and we're looking at people take advantage of us, taking, a, taking advantage of us financially, emotionally, mentally, just completely stepping on the American man. And my solution is for me to be disciplined. 
So if they have 50% of the vote. 53. 53% of the vote. That's that means high. every election, if women vote, they win. They win. So how can you win if you're not influencing them? Influence looks very different. My influence has to come in me going to do the thing. My influence is me being a man of action. When I go and I clear the forest and I build a town, then you can come and live in the town. And when you come live in the town, you know that before I got here, it was trees. I built this. And so we have to build. When you look at America, I the thing that puts men to work has always been infrastructure. So you tell me, hey, let's build High speed rail from sea to shine and sea, and let's make Americans move as fast as possible. And all of a sudden, you got a whole bunch of, of factories building rail, building nails, and fasteners, and all types of buildings. You get many cities when you start building this type of infrastructure. I mean, you get this type of work, and only men can do this real hard physical. I'm I'm John Henry banging on these dang on uh, nut nails. Then they get high paying jobs. When they get high paying jobs, they get a truck and a woman and a baby. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, though. What's up? Do you think with all of what you just said that that will influence women to vote towards a belief you have as a man? I don't care how women vote. I don't care how women vote because voting is an illusion of this facade that we have as a government. This government that we have is the exact same government they instill in, in foreign countries. They go over and they conquer a country, and then they give them candidate A and candidate B, which are both supported by American dollars. And they give me Kamala, and they give me Donald Trump, and both of them are supported by American dollars. Like the influence that comes from, uh, from Israel, the influence that comes from Saudi Arabia and these kings— our government is controlled by foreign dollars, and I'm not asking their permission. They only exist to benefit me, but they don't benefit me right now. And so when you ask me what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to take up responsible authority over our living situation. I have to say it very specifically. Nonviolent, nonviolent. That's what Martin <laughs> said. A nonviolent, nonviolent. This is the most powerful military that's ever existed in the history of the world. And the only thing that you can do, the most, the most valuable thing that men have in this whole entire country, women control 53% of the vote and men control 93% of all manual labor jobs in America. So to keep your lights on, you need that electrician to get up there and God dog going to do the thing. If you need your gas on, you need this lineman to come out here and dig some holes and do the thing. You need strong men to build these streets, to build the entire infrastructure from now until far into perpetuity. We don't have no machines that can do this labor that men be doing. When you go to the store, do you know that you have to have an order selector at a big warehouse that runs through the warehouse as fast as possible, getting all these heavy items that you're ordering at your door? There's a man doing that. I've worked in several warehouses. I've never seen a woman doing it. There might be two or three, but 93%, that's me, baby. That's me. You know, I'm almost wondering if you collectively put men together and this information and you have some sort of demonstration to show that, do you enforce gender roles again? Because it seems like life is so easy. We've talked about this, that is of making women think that they can just have some sort of control that they really don't have. All these conversations we're having, like people are going to do what they're, whatever's the easiest route, that's what people are going to do. And so right now, it's so very easy for women to just like blame men for everything and then go pass some laws. And after you pass the laws, then you just put your foot back on my neck again. You're going to tax the man in some type, some other type of way. Child support is taxation without representation. I didn't agree to that amount of money. And if you tell me that I have to negotiate, then you should provide a lawyer just like in, in, like in a public hearing if I go to a trial. I agree with that. I actually agree with that. <laughs> like we said, you know, if you can make a choice to keep or have or destroy a child, why am I? I have no negotiation power when it comes to child support or even if I should be doing it, especially if I'm an active father in a child's life. That's something else I don't understand, too, because how am I going to survive? So you mean 40 percent of my paycheck up to 40 percent of my paycheck, depending on how many children I have, is gone. I could be working 60 hours a week. 
and when we talk about taxes, right, the, the primary custodian, they get to file taxes with the children. And so even though I'm giving half or 40 up to 40 percent of my money, me is 33 percent of my money going to my children or I'm being taxed that there's a running bill of man. They're trying to come and get me. I know that. And then when I go clock in for my taxes, that's another 33 percent. And then you tell me I'm supposed to eat. I'm supposed to clothe myself and I'm still supposed to be dad. Men aren't having this conversation because it's very embarrassing. I have had friends that sleep outside of Planet Fitness. I've had friends. I've had myself sleeping outside of Walmarts and inside of my van because I had nowhere to go. And I had my children for the weekend and I had to pay for food. And then after that, dad ain't have nothing to eat. And you're just trying to figure out one day at a time, one step at a time. And it's a crime for me to be a father. I'm having I'm having turmoil right now because my baby mama, she's looking at my situation. She's like, I expect you to do this. How you man, nothing from nothing leaves nothing, baby mama. You got everything. huh? All I got is the roof over my head and the ability to broadcast to you wonderful people. I said this time and time again that it's the money because they have so much access to money. They believe it literally grows on trees. They want you to do these extraordinary feats. They want you to be able to produce so much money and even so much time for them. And it's impossible. It's very rational thinking. What's more valuable than you, man? Nothing. You're a father. Nothing. You got sons and daughters who are looking. They look like you. They're looking at you. They're looking for guidance. And instead of you seeing the value of my personhood, all you want is a check. And I'm, that's inhumane. The way the American man is being treated is like just a dog. And for me to bark and say, oh, they say, hit dog, holler. I'm hollering. And, and the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And so we got to scream louder and louder. <laughs> a truth that may not make many of you uh, happy is this, that many women only real attachment to their child is the man they love. They really don't have any real allegiance to those children. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise they would not put their father in such a situation to where he couldn't take care of those children because those children really love their father. No, a lot of y'all don't like hearing that. And I know it's not easy to digest, but the truth is the true allegiance to those children. This is how some women are mistreat children when they have when they're at odds with the father. But if they Say really some, a lot look, of them, you look at the domestic uh, for children and those types of situations for corporal punishment. Mm -hmm. It's the mom. CPS cases, it's the mom. If it's not the mom, it's the mom's boyfriend. Like these people are complicit in the destruction of their own children, and you're penalizing me for her decisions. I can't tell that woman what to do or what not to do. All I can tell you is that stop taking my money and giving it to her. If she wants to be single, single super mom, be single super mom on your own dime. And if America wants to be like, if you really care about these kids, then there should be programs that reinforce the family, that promote the family, <laughs> that make it economically possible where to have a family. Are, where are these programs? Where are they? Where Where is the idea, the ideology, to your point, that can, that promotes conventional families and that, that makes it affordable to even have this? Do you guys realize that is the centerpiece of our society? That is the centerpiece of our community is having family. The world is ran by and made up of conventional families. Why don't we see this? Families create communities. Communities create towns, towns and cities. This is the infrastructure of our entire nation. But instead of looking at the baseline, I heard uh, <laughs> Charlemagne was talking to the Breakfast Club and he was talking about... Um, because J.D. Vance said, cat ladies, cat ladies, ch <laughs> ch childless cat ladies. And that offended so many people. What did Charlemagne have to say about that? And so th that's a great question. Twenty mil uh, Women between 20 and 39, 22 million of these women do not have any children. This is of childbearing age. And so we start having that conversation. She's like, you can have population collapse so quickly. It took a lot of people, it took hundreds of millions of people to build America up to what it is. It takes hundreds of millions of more people to, con to continue to sustain America. And if you don't have a population that, that sustains that workforce, guess what happens to the city? Buildings start to collapse. Uh, infrastructure starts to go away because you don't have the manpower to sustain the city. You wonder how cities die? You stop having babies. And then people move away. And then Houston used to be. And now it's not no more. 
you know, this going to sound crazy, but I'm almost wishing that those evil wounds and those selfish wounds do go away. Like, I don't even know we should procreate with them. I hear what you're saying. Like, that's true. But it's like, maybe we should start over. Like, we have a lot of bad ideology out here. And putting my seed in this evil womb, this evil cat lady womb, is that could be detrimental. Like, I almost wanted to fade out. And I believe that a lot of these women, too, by the way, are like a black Israelite. <laughs> These boys be talking hey, about death and destruction. Them, them black Israelites, hey, if they come here, dog, they going to be coming with their boots and they Power Ranger uniforms they ready, on our They ass. ready for fire and brimstone. Are you you're saying you're ready for fire and brimstone? But listen, dog, it's like how, how much more can we take of a certain ideology continuing on? It's like, I'm, um, that's what I'm saying. I'm almost wondering, should you just, Hey, cause they're not. Okay. Women who don't want to have children, women who have had multiple abortions. Why would you procreate with her? Man, because I'm a man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Want to get in them guts. huh? Not even just to get in those guts. If you're designed to do a thing, then you just have to do the thing. I'm not going to argue why am I supposed to do the thing because I'm supposed to do it. And at this time and place, the caliber of woman that exists, this is the caliber of woman that exists. And she's looking at the, cal the caliber of man that exists, and she's thinking the exact same thing. And so guess what? We got to keep we gotta keep boning. We got to keep making babies. And hopefully we have some good conversations, some good ideas to pull us out of these dark times. Hopefully that men want to work together in a collective I'm going to be way. honest with you. I think Kamala is lying to y'all. I don't think that, I don't think the powers that be behind them want abortion to be as legal as y'all think. Why would a beautiful woman ever want to be a stepmama? I just, I'm curious. Is, is her womb dead? Why would a beautiful <laughs> woman ever want to be a stepmama? Hey, dog. To some children that don't even look like what her. What if she couldn't have kids? Can she have kids? I can understand that if you were a man and you can like squint and see that the children could look like you, like, man, if they had a baby, it would look like that. You with some children, they know. They're like, are you their nanny? Are you Nanny Mala? <laughs> nanny Mala. I bet those children don't like that woman, man. It's so, it's so mean for me to say that, but goodness gracious. And how many kids really like step parents, though? That's a great question. That's a I don't great know. Question. I, ain't, I ain't got now. Like I'm just saying, I don't. I don't think. I don't think step parents have the best or position the best to get that type of love from children. So you could be right, and they're ethnically different. Man, we got it. We can't deny that that's not an issue. That here. was another thing Charlemagne was promoting. He was talking about Pete Buttigieg as a father. He said Pete Buttigieg is a father. Who? A, Pete Buttigieg. Who was that? A white man who ran for president and he got appointed to a highly prominent office. He, uh, uh, he a gay man. He ran for president. He ain't make it. And so they gave him a position. He's married and he, they have stepchildren. That's a conversation. Why would He's two, married to a man. Why would two men who make a decision and say, we're going to love each other. And so based on anatomy, neither one of us can have a baby. And so why am I going to go and use someone else's womb to try to create a baby that's not really my baby? And we're just going to put a hodgepodge of some stuff and a Petri dish and say, voila. And then you're going to ask me about Cam Newton and what he does with his body as you have people who don't even have the ability to make babies taking babies from other people's bodies. The, the attack of the body snatchers. Y'all are some, that's some wild stuff. And then have Charlemagne black media face. Yes, you. You keep promoting <laughs> these negative ideas to our community, normalizing this debauchery. Hey, man, that liberal mindset is <clears throat> very dangerous. It's so much more dangerous than what you would say the conservative mindset is. Because I'm going to tell you something. So, you know, we talk about Eidos, right? Yes. Um, I My brother, who is liberal, he doesn't like that school of thought. And I'm like, wait a minute. How could you have an issue with that? It's not a it's not even like this extreme idea. It totally makes sense. But guess what? It is counterproductive to the liberal mindset. I'm not trying to, you know, the liberal, crap on my bro. The liberal agenda is everything is OK as long as there's no violence attached to it. Theoretically, is that if there is no harm, but the liberal agenda never looks 50 years from now to see if you destroy a society. They have these ideas. And when these ideas have ever been tried, they don't they, they're It's not sustainable. You can't you cannot sustain a population with gay people. That's insane. Right. Should, should same sex couples be able to have children? Now, when we have these conversations about legality, everything in our society is based on legalities. I'm kind of pivoting. 
Because when we're talking about men and things that we want to do as men, everything, being a man is a political issue. Being a black man is a political issue. Right. There's intersectionality when it comes to legality. And so I don't even want to have a conversation about them. I want to have, I want to protect my rights as a father. Right. You can't tell me how I'm supposed to raise my children as the state because Pete Buttigieg is theoretically a father. You just asked me a question about people who are parents right now to children that are not their biological children. Right. And if they're doing that, how in the hell can you ever talk to a person that can actually make babies and tell me I shouldn't be making babies because I'm destroying homes? What about the babies in homes that ain't they homes? And how many men did you say is on child support? Man, millions. Millions of men that are on child support. And I said, like, that number that I was referencing a few years ago, they did a study about men outside of the work outside of the workforce, and that number was something like ten million men. They didn't give exactly why these men were not in the workforce, but they're not. They weren't necessarily married men either, so it's not like they had a rich wife taking care of them. These people were felons who could not participate in the above ground market, and people on child support who not who cannot. Uh, participate in the above ground market and so we go to the black market and we do whatever we can just to make it to the next day <laughs> what could you do if you could reach 10 million men with a positive message with a message that influences them to make them better and get them into a place where they feel better about themselves where they can take care of themselves where they can provide for their families what do you i think ain't calling no grown man bro like the, the message to 10 million men in America is you have to be powerful. If you see that the system, the de my founding fathers told me how to behave. The Declaration of Independence said when this form of government no longer benefits the people, then it's the right of the people to abolish said government. And if I'm not trying to abolish said government, hey, dear government, please enter into a, an actual negotiation with me. I have some grievances. I agree with that. I have some grievances, man. As soon as Martin Luther King said, we coming for our check, they took his neck all the way off. And and it was so and he's so miraculous because he was a, a doctor by education, but he was a pastor and he chose to use his professional clout, his professional position to come and defend poor people. And I'm asking, hey, dear poor man, hey, dear poor woman, will you defend yourself? Will you be the greatest American alive? The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.